Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fall here at the University of Hartford at the President's College. We're so happy to be back after a great summer. And we have, of course, as our guest, we have uh, Steve Metcalf, who is from the, uh, Steve, you were at the Hartford Current, uh, at music, direct, music critic for many, many years. Many, 20. 20, that's, that's many. <laughs> and Steve, uh, we also have Joe Volker, Joe is the director of the President's College at the uh, University of Hartford, and he's got a whole thing to talk about to inform the people here in West Hartford what's happening at the President's College. Go, Joe. Well, thank you, Bob. Um, once again, the fall semester is about to begin, and we have a very rich array of learning opportunities at the President's College this fall. Uh, we've got over 20 courses to choose among. Of course, I'm not going to be able to cover more than a tiny handful of those, uh, but I will highlight. And also, we've got our lecture series at Duncaster and Macaulay Retirement Homes and on our campus, the Fellows Lecture Series. So uh, there's a great deal to describe. I'm very excited about what we've put together for the fall. Um, the way to shop and find out what we're doing is to go to the President's College and then to, to, or to the University of Hartford and then the President's College webpage where the entire catalog in all detail, dates, times, prices is right there for you to see and to register. It's a very easy registration process now um, and it's been put online. Or, Joe, you yes. can call this telephone number 860-768 for 495 and operators are ready to take your call and will send you at your request a month a monthly copy of the bulletin so you have it in your hands for us older people okay okay uh, the first course that I want to mention is our own former director Humphrey Tonkin's class Humphrey is going to do a fall and winter year-long course on the history of England in the 16th century. Oh. The century in which England went from a small island to an empire. And we all remember the Spanish Armada in 1588. He's going to do it decade by decade and talk about great artifacts of literature and architecture and the way in which they played into the narrative of the formation of England. I think it's a particularly poignant moment with wow. Brexit still going on and will be going on for some time to contemplate the beginnings of England. He's going to cover all the Tudors? Yes. Is that the first one, is the Tudors? He'll start with um, Henry VII, I believe, and he'll go through the great divorce in the fall. Okay. Yeah. Um, we have some familiar faces back. Kathleen McGrory offered a successful course last uh, spring on the Irish Rebellion of 1916, and she's going to follow up with women in Irish history, from the very aggressive and manly Queen Maeve, all the way to the last uh, president of Ireland, Mary Robinson, and talk about the aspects of women and leadership and gender um, in that country. Jill de Aliota's back with the roundup of the Supreme Court, and she's going to talk about some of the decisions that came down in 2015 that will probably address and affect our lives for a long time. And some of those are, of course, religious freedom, contraception, um, presidential power and the limits to it, mm -hmm. and, and many others. And I'm sure that that group will also be talking about Merrick Garland and whether he will ever be on the Supreme Court or whether they will remain at eight. 
<laughs> for some time to come. Um, the famous Patrick McCacky, who is uh, the former Athenaeum director and also the former head of the Yale Center for British Art, is going to do um, a study with the class on American artists and their attitude toward the great European tradition. And he'll talk about, in particular, John Singer Sargent and uh, Frank Stella, who didn't care much about the European tradition. There's, there's a movement here. Um, Sad for him. <laughs> great painter. Yep. I'm going to do a course, and I'll toot my own horn for the next 45 seconds, on the novels of Anne Tyler. She's now in her 51st year of writing novels. We will start with her first book when she was just 22, and we'll end with an interesting little uh, uh, novella. The Hogarth Shakespeare Publishing Company has asked a number of contemporary novelists to take a Shakespeare play and recast it in their sensibility. And she has chosen Taming of the Shrew. Really? If you know your Ann Tyler at all, that's a very odd mm. combination. And it'll be great fun. And on the, on the way, I will uh, cover with the class a number of her greatest hits. So that should be, that'll be six sessions, and I'm really looking forward to that. We're going to do a course in collaboration with Theater Works in Hartford. It turns out that Einstein had a child in 1902. This is Albert. And the child disappeared in 1904. And Mark St. Germain has written a play about the question, is a great genius necessarily also a great moral being? Some of this is speculation, but it's a very interesting play. Our class will read the play with the author, then attend a rehearsal, and then stay for a performance and talk back. So it should be a great way to get back behind the scenes and see what goes on with the making of a contemporary play. What month of year is this, Joe? Um, they will do that in September and October. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Juilliard String Quartet is going to be coming to the University of Hartford. Larry Allen Smith is going to host an afternoon exclusively for students of the President's College to talk with and see demonstrated the, the dynamics of the foursome when they do a quartet, mm -hmm. how they signal one another, how they convey emotion across the four corners of the, of the musical performance, if you will. Mm -hmm. And again, that has that intimate uh, behind the scenes feeling to it. So we're very lucky to have them coming. And of course, if I can say, they are here also to perform as part of the Garmony Chamber Music Series. Which Steve founded <laughs> and of course... But which uh, Larry now is the curator of. Yeah, but, but, and directed for a number of years. Uh, well, seven, but who's counting? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm going to stop with, with close description, but I want everyone to know that we've got courses on the medieval monastery, on how to write your own memoir, the history of the book from scroll to screen. Uh, Frank Rizzo is going to talk about the musical Hamilton. That may be as close as anyone gets <laughs> for a while. And Chris Doyle is back to lead his foreign affairs group. So it's, a, it's going to be a lively time, but I want to move as quickly to the symposium, which we are going to have on September 17th. And Bob, you remember our old symposium, I'm sure. Do I ever. It was very, very informative and very challenging. And I, I was gonna, the, the one we're having in the fall, is that a la the way they were in the past, or is it a, a brand new methodology of doing Exactly, it? we have changed it up. It used to be three simultaneous classes at five different times, and you simply enjoyed the smorgasbord of topics. Right. But this time we're devoting the day to the future of the arts in Hartford, the region, and the state. And that's why I've persuaded Steve to come and talk with us a little bit today too. Because as I tried to plan this day, which I will describe for you, um, Steve was my guardian angel. Uh, he he <laughs> whispered things in my ear that I needed to know. And as it progressed, I think we drank a dozen cups of coffee at Panera through minimum. this whole uh, Minimum. Minimum. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and, but let me give you a description, and please do comment, Steve, on some of these things and the issues that they will raise. I will start to tell you a little bit about the symposium today um, that we're going to have on September 17th on the future of the arts. Good. Um, we're calling it Politics and the Arts, and let me just start with a few of the participants to give you a sense of the import of this day. 
Uh, Christina Scott Newman, our Director of Culture for the State of Connecticut, will do the initial address to kick us off. And then we're going to have a discussion between President Walter Harrison of the University of Hartford and uh, uh, Brian Greenfield, who used to be very active in the arts here and has since moved on to New Jersey, where she is Director of Culture and Tourism. She's coming back to the state mm. um, for the day. And then here are some of the arts people in the, in, the, in the scene, if you will, who are going to be there and to talk about key issues. Um, Susan Ballack from Hillstead Museum, Steve Collins from the Hartford Symphony, Betsy Cooper, who's the new dean of the Hart School, David Fay of the Bushnell, Tracy Flater of Playhouse on Park, Min Jung Kim, who's the new director of the New Britain Museum of Art, Tom Lohman from the Wadsworth Athenaeum, Dolly McLean, founding executive uh, director of the Artists' right. Collective, right? right. Um, William Frank Mitchell, director of the Amistad Center, Julia Rosenblatt from Heartbeat Ensemble, Rob Ruggiero, who's at, the, um, at Theater Works, Nancy Stewart, dean of the Hart School, and Will K. Wilkins, the very inventive director at Real Artways. Well, you have all the luminaries, you know, from the art scene throughout the state. I can't stop grinning. Yeah, it's wonderful that you were able to bring them all together. Well, Steve helped me with strategies for invitation yeah. and for seeing what panels and what topics would work best as we worked on this this summer. Well, let me just jump in and say, first of all, I don't remember any of the, uh, of the whispering that you uh, referred to. <laughs> talk, but, um, what, what I think is so impressive and, and uh, really distinctive about this is that really all, all I did was uh, suggest a few names here and there. But uh, I think it is um, unusual and important that all of these arts folks who typically uh, go about their business in their own somewhat hermetic life, you know, uh, concentrating on their own individual organizations, are coming together for this symposium. It doesn't happen very often. In fact, I can't think of the last time that a group of this size of people in the arts of, of this stature came together to share ideas and to, and to talk with the, with the folks uh, from mm. the President's College about the issues that face the arts. It's, it's really, I think, a very unusual and distinctive and it's uh, highly that you needed put in, in, and, and very needed. Very much needed in, in the greater Hartford area. It might start some conversations among them that would lead to strategies. I also sure. think, this is an and, that the audience that may be attracted to this are people who are supporters of the arts and would love to, again, that back behind the scenes metaphor, but would love to have a day with these people seeing how they think and what is the magic that makes them so enjoy visits to their museums, to the symphony, to the, the theater, etc. So I'm hoping that as we get the word out, a lot of people who are audience and are supporters of the arts will find this an informative day. Let me ask you, how do you plan to get the word out other than this wonderful TV program? <laughs> what, what are your other avenues to get the word out? We're sending many, many, many invitations through the mail, which invite people to come see the entire program yeah. on the website. We are also using our Office of um, uh, Marketing and Communication to uh, reach local media and ask them to publicize this as well. And actually, after today, my main job will be to call around to the media and to those various places. Um, Frank Rizzo's offered to help. Um, Steve knows a great many people. And we will be working on this on the ground now from, from today until September 17th. Yeah. Do you Got have any major, ideas? Do you have a major domo for this thing? Or Steve, are you the major domo? No, I think you're looking at the Joe? domo over here. The, the host for the day is Walter Harrison. Okay. And right with him will be President Emeritus, Emeritus Humphrey Tonkin. Okay. So they will be playing the role of, of, of host of the day. Good. Well, they're certainly qualified. They certainly are. Okay. So now give us the date again. September the 17th. It's a Saturday. Okay. We start at 9 with registration, and uh, we go through... The things I've mentioned, which were the plenary address at the beginning, and then uh, uh, Walter and Brian talking about the philosophical question of funding for the arts, public funding for the arts, taxation for the arts, and whether or not we're doing it in the most effective way 
for future generations who are, of course, very technologically minded. I'm talking about millennials and even generations after them who may not have the background in, say, opera that older generations have. That hey, need, you, Steve. <laughs> that need to are be, you calling me an older generation? Yeah, no, an opera aficionado, yes. But I think that um, there, are, there are thoughts to be had about how to bring in young people and get them to have a museum-going, theater-going habit in their lives. And I think that that's changing programming so well, so. I mean, uh, now take, for example, the New Britain Museum, um, which the first time I went there, I felt like I was on Fifth Avenue. I really mean it. it it's, it's dynamite. Anybody who has not enjoyed and taken in the wonderful qualities of that New Britain Museum is just losing so much of what Hartford has to offer. Yeah, it I mean, is, just it is one of the great is, success stories in the, in the area's arts life of the last generation. Oh, there's no question. Yep. I've taken my grandson. It's a, it's a museum that I think first, is there anything going on there now that my grandson would enjoy? Yep, yep. <laughs> that's, that's an odd combination of thoughts, right. but they're building that pattern in audiences' mind. Well, I can, I can tell you that I, I mean, you, you touched on these a moment ago, Joe, but I, I myself am interested to hear with all these uh, folks that you've assembled for the 17th, uh, hear them address, I think, the two topics that to some extent they, they all struggle with above all. One being how to cultivate a new generation of, of, uh, of customers, if you will, of, of ticket buyers. Um, and the other just being money broadly defined. Where, where does the money to support these organizations come from? Uh, you know, as, as I'm sure you both know, typically these organizations derive uh, roughly and often less than uh, half of their uh, total uh, revenues from ticket sales, the other half having to come from what we, what we sometimes uh, casually call unearned income, which is to say mm -hmm. donated income. Mm -hmm. So I think it'll be interesting to hear all of these very successful and very smart people uh, discuss that question, or those two questions, uh, and talk about what strategies. Th these are obviously not issues unique to Hartford or to the state, but they are the issues that I think over overwhelmingly uh, uh, preoccupy Arts leaders these Throughout days. Throughout the country. I mean, everywhere. 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 And, yeah. and maybe we can be the kernel, you know, that'll, that'll change or, or add so much to the arts organization's needs that it will go viral. You know, wouldn't that be wonderful? What a dream. Wouldn't it be? We yeah. also have uh, Senator Beth Bayh uh, yes. coming to lead a group on um, public funding. And we're going to have uh, be represented by philanth a, a philanthropist or two. And we have Patrick McCabe, who's a lobbyist for the arts. So people can also learn a little more about what goes on behind the scenes in terms of moving public money around. Mm -hmm. But I think that, that I think that Beth Bayh will be a really interesting addition to the program as well. Well, you know, when the Connecticut Opera was still rolling along, uh, we spent a lot of time encouraging corporate sponsors um, and they were very, very forthcoming. Um, if you found the colonel to get them, you know, interested mm -hmm. in the particular, you know, presentation that we were doing at the Bushnell. Now, this is a whole area, you know, that we also should encourage uh, our speakers to address. And um, I hope they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a piece that... Um and it was at one time very, very important across the country. It really was, yeah. We are going to have a panel that I want to mention um, on art and social justice and art as a means of expressing uh, uh, thoughts that lead, that as, as they say, arc toward justice in the world. And I think that's going to be very interesting. We're also going to have, um, we're going to end the day with performances so that after worrying about the arts for the last <laughs> roughly 50 minutes, we're going to hear a number from Little Shop of Horrors, which is going to play at Playhouse on Park. We're yep. going to have the wonderful Shakespeare break dancers do a number for us. Really? I've been on the website um, 
and seen the Shakespeare break dancers do something from Macbeth, and it was absolutely astonishing. My jaw simply dropped for that. Huh. Um, and Javon Jackson is going to talk a little bit about um, aspects of the saxophone and jazz and then play a little demonstration piece for us too. So we're, we're going to end on a really joyous note, I think. Sounds wonderful. In the middle, we'll talk about things like what we've already talked about, audience building, funding, and some other topics you might find interesting. Um, how to support new young artists. I think that should be fun. We've got so many newcomers to these arts organizations. I mentioned Susan Ballack, Tom Lohman, Steve Collins, uh, our new dean of the Hart School, are all recently here. And um, we're going to have a panel on what's it like to be brand new and to step into this arts world and mm. what's your vision, what do you see, and what maybe, you know, disturbed you the most about all this. Huh. Huh. Well, it should be quite an interesting and informative day. Um, more information, call this number, 768-4495, and I assume that the respondent will send, will receive uh, our monthly newsletter um, if they want to receive it through the mail or um, online. Uh, very simple to get it online, I assume. Right here, this is the... That's the place to go, and that's, that's where the catalog is to be found. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. good, good. Steve, do you have anything more you want to add? Well, I don't know. I, as I say, I myself, as somebody who has... Uh, shall we say, observed and written about the arts scene in this community for several decades now. And I'm really looking forward to, uh, as I say, seeing all of these very smart, accomplished people together in one place in one day, which I think is, is mm -hmm. uh, sort of unprecedented. So, uh, so I think it'll be a special occasion. I, I, I truly do. Joe, is this your work? I mean, uh, this does not follow the usual annual meeting that we have in early early September about the upcoming season. Is this your um, your baby? You know, Don't be shy. Bob, the way this started was that I decided to reread a really interesting um, piece by Jean-Jacques Rousseau. And it was it was edited by the somewhat notorious Alan Bloom these rather right-wing Straussian philosopher um, who sees the world as a sort of a pillared Greek temple and wonders why it's not that way. Mm. Um, certain nostalgia for the, the dream of ancient Greece. But that aside, um, he edited and then wrote a wonderful introduction to Rousseau's letter to D'Alembert. And it's one of the philosophs, you know, en encyclopedie kind okay. of pieces. Okay. And in it, Rousseau said, I can see why Paris has a theater. I can see why that theater subsidized. Paris has no purpose. Paris is there to be a center of pleasure, uh, a, a, you know, a light for the arts perhaps, but it's just a capital. But here in Geneva, we live to pursue Protestant virtue. There is no place for a theater to be subsidized by our coffers, by our money, if we are pursuing heaven through Protestant virtue. And he opposed very eloquently the idea of a theater all, at all. Now, I think today that would not happen. That would not be the basis of the argument. But what about arguments of, is the dollars, are the dollars that come from Connecticut being spent in a way that, that I don't know, pursues a progressive agenda or an educational agenda or an aesthetic agenda effectively? Or would we end up arguing instead a lot of very wealthy people go to a lot of galas and do a lot of tax-free spending and socializing to see an opera again. Mm -hmm. Fine, beautiful, just like Paris. But is that the purpose of our tax dollars? I'm hoping, because that was the, the kernel of the idea that got me going on this, I'm hoping that, that, that some contemporary version of that will get discussed too. Well, we had at one time uh, the Connecticut Commission on the Arts. Is that still functioning? Uh, it's been folded into a larger organization having okay. to do with tourism. I can't give you the exact title of that Because large I one. was uh, on that Connecticut Commission on the Arts for a number of years. Oh. And it was run by 
the guy from uh, the down the river there, Good Speed Opera. He Michael. Was the, Michael. He was the president. And we had an appropriation and decided, we, and then we had um, requests from various organizations around the state for a certain appropriation from this pot that, of money that we had. And it was so interesting to see what the results, not only the, the, the thinking of, of this group, we had like about 20 people on the Connecticut Commission, and how they arrived at appropriating this money to each of these organizations who requested it. Now, do we still have this whole me mechanism, uh, you know, happening or what? Well, uh, it, it works a little differently than the way it worked in those old days. But, but I think, in a way, that's one of the questions that these folks will explore. And I think Beth Bai's take on this will be valuable and Patrick McCabe's. Uh, be because I think that very question is is undergoing a great sort of shift uh, with respect to the question that Joe just raised, which is to say, are public tax dollars appropriate for this purpose? And if so, who decides and on what basis? So that that is one of the questions. Isn't that the way it's sort of followed in Europe? Don't doesn't the government underwrite a lot of the arts organizations? in these various countries in Europe? Well, it's always been the case, but as I'm sure you know, uh, in recent years, even in Europe, that model has been breaking down a little bit. And, and as uh, pressures uh, on governments to spend on social services and other things increase, uh, spending on the arts in Europe, as elsewhere, has decreased, so. Sad. Sadly, well, but tr sad but true, as I would say. <laughs> okay, Joe, let's just review the, the bidding here. The date, the time, the, the, all that mechanical stuff. Saturday, September 17th. Okay. We register at 9. It takes place on the University of Hartford campus in the Wild Auditorium and the Harry, J, Harry Jack Gray Center. Lunch is included for the price of admission. Um, and we will end with that Celebration of the Arts performance session around 4.30. Okay. And where, where will the, the, the performance be? There in the wild? It'll be in Wild Auditorium. Okay. Yes. And again, call this number, 768-4495, if you're interested in registering. Is that right? Or, and or onto the website. That's right. And um, that will, uh, we, we, will, we will be able to uh, accommodate. We can accommodate any number. Is that right? I think that we could have 200 people accommodated at this. Wow. At which point the restaurant sort of runs out of <laughs> runs stoves. <laughs> uh, really? <clears throat> well, Steve, thank you very much. Bob, good to see it's you. It's been a pleasure being with you here. My pleasure. And Joe, of course, you are the mainstay here. And I love your tie, by the way. And Steve, you and I, I guess, don't have ties I, on today. I feel underdressed. But thank you very much to both of you. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this program, Conversations from the President's College of the University of Hartford. Good night. <laughs>